report. All right, so again, my name is uh, Dr. Nicholas Hudson and I serve as the Director of the Office of Student Orientation, Leadership and Engagement. It is my uh, pleasure to welcome you to the next installment of the Social Change Leadership Series. Um, today we're gonna have a conversation called Acting Globally. Uh, so this is the second component of the Social Change Leadership Series. We do one uh, cultural heritage uh, conversation and we do one uh, social change conversation. And so today is the social change conversation uh, that we'll have here. Uh, today, our guest speaker is Ms. Consuelo Guzman, who will be speaking to you about the UN Sustainable Development Goals and how you can apply it locally. So let's go ahead and give her a warm uh, welcome. <laughs> Thank you all so much for being here, and um, just wanted to start by saying thank you to Dr. Hudson and the Office of Student Orientation, Leadership, and Engagement for giving me the opportunity to talk about the Sustainable Development Goals. I actually hold this very close to my heart, and I want to talk about this, right? Um, I think it's something really important that um, especially our youth needs to be aware of, uh, that way we can apply it and all work together towards this goal. Uh, how many of you all have actually heard of the Sustainable Development Goals before? Three, four of us. Four of us? Five of us? Oh my God. You see, so this is where we want to go ahead and raise awareness on um, this topic. Um, and so today we're going to be talking about this. Let's see what's going on with this one. Sorry. I got it. Thanks. Move it from the other side. Okay. Okay, so what exactly are the global goals? Um, so our global goals here, Sustainable Development Goals, they are known as the SDGs for short. They are 17 interconnect interconnected goals that were adopted by the United Nations um, in 2015. And these, we are looking to achieve them by 2030, right? Um, and if you notice, I'm going to be using this we context a lot throughout this presentation because this is actually a shared goal and responsibility that all of the world um, shares, right? Um, something to note about this is that the UN, even though they passed it, the member states agreed to it, they each decided um, how they're going to implement them, right? So the UN doesn't tell any... Um, of the governments, any of the countries, how to implement these goals, but rather they all agree to work together on them. Um, each goal has specific targets to be achieved and progress is tracked through a set of indicators. And so we're gonna go over some of these um, later on throughout the presentation. So the SDGs are a global call to action to create a more sustainable and equitable world for everyone, leaving no one behind. Right, so this is something good. This is something to progress um, as humanity, as the world together. Um, achieving the SDGs requires a collective effort of civil of governments, civil society, the private sectors, and individuals worldwide. And so we're going to see how each one of these um, factors play uh, play a role in achieving these goals. So. If we look at this, right, if you all, if we go back to uh, the 17 goals here, and you were able to maybe read into them while we were waiting, uh, we have here no poverty, zero hunger. And if we look at this, the UN is trying to achieve this by 2030. We are currently in 2023, right? We have seven years to achieve no poverty, zero hunger, um, et cetera, by the year 2030. Does that look achievable to you all, right? We have seven years, these were adopted in 2015, and what progress have we made, right? Realistically, you think about it, is there gonna be zero uh, poverty seven years from now? Perhaps not, right? But the UN, right, they have set goals, right? So maybe we can think of this, maybe, uh, you know what, this is too ambitious. How do we even, achieve this, right? Like how, how can we even achieve this? Well, the UN has actually set uh, about 50 quantitative time-bound goals similar to this since 1960, right? Uh, four or five of these goals have been mostly achieved. Some of those 
examples of those are the eradication of smallpox, um, the near eradication of polio and guinea worm, right? Uh, others are targets for raising of life expectancy. Um, the majority of the 50 goals that they've said since then were considerably achieved. Uh, so increase of water, uh, coverage of water, sanitation, education, and immunization for everyone around the world. Um, a few goals, and this is really important to understand and to um, tracking progress means looking at what we have achieved and what we haven't achieved, right? So that we can move forward. And so some of these have actually slipped badly, uh, which are the acceler accelerated reduction of illiteracy, right? So the ability for everyone around the world to read and write. Um, special support for these developed countries. Some of those things we haven't achieved yet or we haven't um, gotten to yet. So what does this tell us, right? Even though maybe they're not gonna be achievable, we're not gonna end poverty by 2030, we can still move forward. We can mostly achieve, we can considerably achieve, right? So any progress is good progress, right? And we are definitely trying to progress rather than regress, right? Um, and so this is why it's important to continue to work on these, even though they might be too ambitious or even though, um, you know, like um, some, like there might be negative thoughts about whether we can actually achieve these or not. Now, how was it that these 17 goals came about, right? How is it that the United Nations thought of these? Uh, we're gonna look at the five Ps. Uh, they, they looked at the five Ps, which are people, prosperity, planet, peace and social justice, and partnerships, right? So the people is looking to leave no one behind in poverty, food, nutrition, health, education, water, sanitation, and energy with equality and the empowerment of women, right? So if we look historically, women have been deprived of um, several of these rights. And so now we're trying to catch up, right? Um, our, our second gender. Prosperity. We want to continue not just to include these basic needs for people, but rather to be able to have abundance in life, right? To live a good life. Um, and so that includes sustainable economic growth, employment, um, that we are sustainably consuming and producing um, natural resources, right? Um, we have our planet also. We all know that our planet uh, the life expectancy of our planet is actually ticking right now, right? And so we need to look at that. We need to make sure that we are uh, continuously progressing or at least considerably slowing down um, how long we have with our planet, right? Um, peace and social justice, right? Um, we want to make sure that we um, are equitable with people around the world, countries around the world, et cetera. And very important part, partnerships. One of the things that, as an undergrad, right, I've always had these like um, wanting to help, wanting to achieve, wanting to, you know, um, I didn't realize that even though I have all of these wants, right, I can only achieve so much as an individual, right? Um, it wasn't until I started joining organizations, started getting involved, that I said, you know what, I can actually achieve a lot more with other people, right? And so this is why it is so important to know um, how partnerships can play a key role in uh, achieving these goals. So the SDGs and their targets, right? Um, what exactly are these SDGs and what are some of their targets? To save some time, I'm gonna go over one of their targets only um, and explain what, what each one of these are. So SDG one, no poverty. So SDG one aims to end poverty in all its forms everywhere. And so all of these are very well tracked, right? Um, the UN has a website where they have all of these targets lined out for you all. I have five of them here, but there's a complete list online. And 
um, they have progress reports, right? So every year, each country has to report back to the UN on how they have progressed on all of these targets. So target 1.1 and poverty by 2030, um, they aim to eradicate extreme poverty for all people everywhere, which is currently measured as people living on less than a dollar and 25 cents a day, right? So that is uh, an example of, of a target there. Now, how is it, um, as Dr. Hudson was saying, right, uh, acting locally? So this notion of acting local, but creating a global impact, right? We have several organizations here um, that are community-based that help with this SDG, right? And so this is why it's so important to understand what these are, because a lot of these organizations are working towards this goal without even knowing that this goal exists, right? And so some of you all, as part of organizations, actually work towards these goals as well, without even knowing that this is a worldwide effort, right? So some of the examples that we have here are community action partnership, um, which are working to reduce poverty uh, here in the community. And they do that by helping families um, look at their taxes, look at their income, right? Um, talk about certain laws, et cetera. We have here in Tamiu, um, the Small Business Development Center that helps uh, families um, be able to grow their small businesses, right? Additionally, we have the Economic Development Corporation uh, here in Texas, and they look specifically at trends. They look at um, the current economic development of each city and propose um, policies, procedures to increase economic development in all cities here in Texas. Now, um, I'm going to have QR codes here. These QR codes are actually uh, linked directly to these, um, to the website where you can find this SDG goal with a full set of their targets, uh, progress, uh, but also if your organization, if you're um, any, any type of organization, whether it be student organization, business, et cetera, is working towards these, you can actually submit events and efforts there as well. Again, this is a combined effort. So SDG number two, zero hunger. SDG number two aims at ending hunger, achieving food security and improve nutrition and promote sustainable agriculture. So an example of this is by 2030 and hunger and ensure access by all people and particularly the poor and people in vulnerable situations, including infants uh, to save nutritious and sufficient food all year round, right? So some of the examples that we have of that are here in, in Laredo, are our Laredo Regional Food Bank, here in Tamiu, Dusty's Food Pantry, uh, South Texas Food Bank, Bethany House. Additionally, something that I also wanna mention, Make a Difference Day 2019, uh, we partnered up, the university partnered up with Feed My Starving Children. This is actually an organization that feeds children in countries other than the USA. Well, actually, you know, they, they fed people in the USA as well. Um, so what are, do, are, are they doing? They're using volunteers here in the USA to pack food for um, children all around the world, right? And so this was Tammy Yu having um, a direct impact on feeding children around the world with this project. And so these projects we can continue to have for us to have continue, um, sorry, continue to have an impact worldwide. So it's not as far reaching as we think. SDG number three is good health and well being. Um, so basically, this SDG is ensuring healthy lives and promote, promoting well-being for, um, for all at all ages, right? So uh, a target for this, by 2030, reduce the global maternity, maternal mortality ratio to less than 70 per 100,000 live births, right? Some of the organizations that we have here locally are the City of Laredo Health Department. Um, but as you all can see, we also have I'm bringing in student organizations into this. So again, this is a 
uh, an effort that we're all working towards together. Student Nurses Association, Tamiyo, AMSA, they all play a part in this. And is anybody from those organizations here? Yes, what organization? AMSA. Perfect, right? So like you're working towards these goals, but you don't know, you didn't even know that they existed, right? So creating awareness for this is gonna be key to everybody else knowing that they can play a part in this as well. And we have SDG number four, quality education. Um, SDG four aims to ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities for all. So target 4.1, uh, by 2030, ensure that all girls and boys complete free, equitable, and quality primary and secondary education leading to relevant and effective learning outcomes. Some of the organizations that we have here locally, communities and schools uh, here in Laredo. I know that uh, one of our sororities here on campus actually has this as their philanthropy and they um, directly um, aid this organization. We have, of course, literacy volunteers of Laredo, our university and college um, and our um, school districts here as well. We're all working towards that goal, right? Making sure that our children are educated and that we continue to progress in that, um, in that SDG. SDG number five, gender equality. We uh, are working to achieve gender equality and empower all women and girls. Uh, target 5.1, and all forms of discrimination against all women and girls everywhere. Some of the organizations that we have here are the Society of Women Engineers, our sororities on campus, um, Leadership Organization for Women, and our Women in STEM here in the university. So again, these organizations, I see some of these um, members of these organizations here in the room, you all are working towards these goals already, right? Um, I did enlist, for example, our fraternities um, that are looking to increase education among Latino men in here, but they are they are part of SDG4 as well, right? So you all, you all are working towards these already. So it's something that you all need to embrace and know that it's a collective effort that we're doing. SDG number six, clean water and sanitation. So SDG 6 um, aims to ensure availability and sustainable management of water and sanitation for all. So by 2030, uh, we're aiming to achieve universal and equitable access to safe and affordable drinking water for all. So some of those organizations here, our main, um, actually our resource of drinking water here in Laredo is our Rio Grande, right? Um, and so we have the Rio Grande International Study Center that is uh, making efforts to ensure that our water continues to be of quality um, and um, that we continue to have access to drinking water here in the community. Additionally, we have the Laredo Water Museum, right? Um, this is um, an organization that continues to educate children and our public on how water is so important and vital to to our communities and how we can play a part in keeping that resource. SDG number seven, affordable and clean energy. So this um, goal aims to ensure access to affordable, reliable, sustainable, and modern, modern energy for all. So target 7.1, by 2030, ensure universal access to affordable, reliable, and modern energy services. Some of the organizations that we have here is actually Schneider Electric, right? This is the company, the, um, the organization that actually helps us, uh, that provides energy here at TAMIU, right? So we made that switch um, to this organization. And if you saw some years ago, uh, they were promoting it as maroon is a new green, et cetera, right? Um, we're making this uh, strides to continue to produce clean energy. Uh, Texas Space Authority. This organization is actually looking at current um, ways that uh, people in their homes are 
um, consuming energy and they give certain grants to help help people make a switch to maybe like solar paneled energy, et cetera. Um, SA Partners, again, looking at ways to incorporate clean energy here um, in Texas. Number eight, decent work and economic growth. So um, this SDG uh, aims to promote sustained, inclusive, and sustainable economic growth, um, full and productive employment, and decent work for all. Target 8.1, sustained per capita economic growth in accordance with national circumstances, in particular, at least 7% gross domestic product growth per annum in the least developed countries. Right? And so we actually look at this um, and maybe we think, you know what, um, the United States, the United States, the United uh, States doesn't um, deal with so much problems. It's a, well, that's something that maybe a lot of us think. Uh, of course, some of our cities are less developed, but um, working towards this and continue to uh, implement programs such as this helps um, organize or countries look at other countries and what they're doing so that they can grow, right? And so it's important to keep on having these conversations and these partnerships so that we can teach. Um, later on in the presentation, I'm gonna talk about an initiative that Laredo had that another um, city um, that is pretty big adopted, right? And looked into. So, sorry, we had job course and, and um, Texas workforce solutions there that are helping um, our community find jobs around the community. SDG number nine, industry, innovation, and infrastructure. So SDG number nine uh, aims to build resilient infrastructure, promote inclusive and sustainable industrialization, and foster innovation. So target 9.1, develop quality, reliable, sustainable, and resilient infrastructure, including regional and trans-border infrastructure to support economic development and human well-being with a focus on affordable and equitable access for all. So some of um, the organizations that we have here, Able City. When I was an undergrad, um, we had Able City come and talk to undergrad students, a cohort of undergrad students, looking at developing our and revitalizing our downtown area, right? So right now, if you go downtown, you see um, that we have a strip with, um, with certain um, nightclubs, et cetera. That wasn't there before. Able City came and talked to students um, wanting to do something similar to Austin, right? There's Sixth Street, Fifth Street. What is it? Sixth Street. Sixth Street. Street. Sorry, never been there. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, something similar to that, right? And so they're looking at um, y'all's input, right? So again, <clears throat> these organizations work with you all, with us, to create impact. So again, uh, this broad jobs, uh, economic growth to that area as well. Um, here we have 10 new ship, our Hispanic professional engineers working towards that goal as well. Our 10 new sets, one of our uh, newest organizations here on campus, um, space exploration and development. Uh, Texas Department of Transportation and Mile One. This is an incubator that we have here in Laredo um, where small businesses can uh, develop, grow, and then go on their own right, to continue um, their businesses. So where to start? SDG number 10, reduce inequalities. Uh, this goal aims to reduce inequality within and among countries. So the target, uh, target 10.1, by 2030, pro progressively achieve and sustain income growth of the bottom 40% of the population at a rate higher than the national average. Some of the organizations that we have here. Gateway City Pride Association. Reduce inequalities among countries. Right. So uh, they're looking at different policies, different um, ordinances 
uh, from our city, from our local state and national governments to continue to develop and to continue to reduce these inequalities that exist between people around here. Americans with Disabilities Act, right? Same thing, we're working on that. Um, I have Catholic Social Services here. This organization actually works directly with um, people that um, are immigrants here um, and are working towards um, either their citizenship, their uh, residency here in the United States. Okay. Uh, SDG number 11, sustainable cities and communities. So we wanna make cities and human settlements inclusive, safe and resilient and sustainable. So by 2030, we wanna ensure access for all to adequate, safe and affordable housing and basic services and upgrade slums. So this is actually one I wanted to talk about. And this is where it's really important to stay um, informed of what your local government is working on, right? We had the Viva Laredo plan that was passed in 2017. This plan, if you open it, this is a book, it has a comprehensive uh, guide of how they wanna uh, they want to make Laredo a more progressive city, right? So um, some of these examples are how to make um, Laredo a walkable city, right? Rather than just a, a city where you drive, uh, making sure that you can walk, making sure that you can bike around the city. So they looked at this, and this is what I was talking to you all about. Um, around 2020, I had the opportunity to work with um, an organization um, and people from Helsinki, Finland, they, we talked about this going back to the SDG goals, talked about how um, partnerships can create um, these, change that we, these changes that we need. Um, in a proclamation that the mayor of Laredo and the mayor of Helsinki, Finland um, did together, they commended Laredo for the Viva Laredo plan, right? Because this is a step-by-step -step guide for citizens to understand how they can play a part and how the government can play a part in developing their city. So this is something that Helsinki said, wow, this is awesome, like including your citizens, giving them a comprehensive guide, something to look back at, something that um, they can read back on and say, hey, have we achieved this or have we not? However, I do not know this is back in 2017. I haven't been able to find updated information on this. And so we did the plan, we put it together, we got commended on it, but have we achieved it and have we followed up on it, right? So this is where us as citizens, we need to make sure that we're keeping track of what our city council is doing and ask them, you know what? We really like this plan. We want to continue to grow on that plan, etc. SDG number 12, responsible consumption and production. So this SDG aims to ensure sustainable consumption and production patterns. Target 12.1, implement the 10 year framework of programs on sustainable consumption and production patterns. All countries taking actions with developed countries taking the lead taking into account the development and capabilities of developing countries, right? Checking the time. Um, okay, so we have the Laredo Food Policy Council. This council actually started maybe like about a, a year, two years ago. Um, we started forming this council. And again, going back to how important it is that you, you do your efforts and you publicize your efforts. This is actually, uh, if I'm not mistaken, uh, a copy of something that Detroit did, if I'm not mistaken, um, where they created this wheel, right? So this Food Policy Council actually came together. They brought together different people. Um, I was able to be part of the council um, when I was still working with just these food pantry, right? So they're bringing in different uh, people from the community that have something to do with production of food. So what this is saying is uh, production, processing and packaging, distribution, access and nutrition, 
consumption and waste. Want to look at the whole spectrum of the wheel, right? And making sure that we are um, not overproducing. And um, as we are, um, as, uh, as um, food becomes waste, how do we throw that away, right? How can we compost, for example, et cetera? So making a uh, circularity, achieving circularity. In that. So this is actually, they were able to implement certain guidances, um, ordinances with the city, uh, with the Laredo Policy Council. Uh, SDG 13, climate action. So uh, this goal aims to take urgent action to combat climate change and its impacts. Target 13.1, strengthen resilience and adaptive capacity to climate-related hazards and natural disasters in all countries. Some of the organizations um, that we have working towards this. Action Committee for Climate Change. Uh, anybody part of that organization here? No? Okay, we, I just talked to them last, well, yesterday for Maroon Madness. They had their bird feeders um, activity. Super cute, right? Um, so yes, Action Committee for Climate Change. They're working towards this goal, right? Again, it is like, um, be knowing what you're working towards and uh, connecting with other people and seeing how you can make those efforts even stronger. Uh, we have commission shift. Uh, we were actually able to have a presentation uh, last year, last semester uh, of, with commission shift, talking about um, how our natural resources are being used, um, what protections um, we can have, right? Or what protections are being taken away by our legislators for these for the for the responsible production of our natural resources. Um, Lomar Vergara here for our uh, we have a center right uh, where you have all your animals. Um, they're looking into uh, continuing the vitality here in the Laredo area, looking at our natural resources and um, how to protect our our area here. SDG goal 14, black below water. Um, so this SDG aims to conserve and sustainably use ocean, seas, and marine resources for sustainable development. So target 14.1, by 2025, prevent and significantly reduce marine pollution of all kinds, in particular from land-based activities, including marine debris and nutrient pollution. Um, so here in Laredo, we don't have an ocean. Right. <laughs> Unfortunately, and so sad. But um, these are some of the national, international organizations that are working to um, maintain the vitality of our oceans, uh, ocean conservancy and the ocean cleanup. However, it is important to note that we do have the Rio Grande, right? And we do have um, life below water in our Rio Grande as well. And so that is something that we can continue to uh, work so it's progression here. Life on land. Um, this SDG aims to protect, restore, and promote sustainable use of terrestrial ecosystems, sustainably manage forests, combat desertification, and halt reverse land degradation and halt biodiversity loss. So if you see some of these, they kind of are interconnected, interlap in some of their goals, uh, for example, uh, example, climate change. But it is important to note that the targets themselves are very focused on what they're trying to achieve, right? So this one is aiming more at actual animal conservation and actual land forest conservation rather than climate change overall. Some of the organizations, we don't have too many here in Laredo, uh, American Forests, Sierra Club, and the Worldwide Foundation for Animals that are Becoming Extinct, Protection of Those Animals. SDG number 16, uh, Peace, Justice, and Strong Institutions. So SDG 16 aims to promote peaceful and inclusive societies for sustainable development, provide access to justice for all, and build effective, accountable, and inclusive institutions at all levels. Target 16.1, significantly reduce all forms of violence, violence and related death rates everywhere. 
peace and justice. Um, some of the programs that we have here are what we're doing here today, social justice, um, social change leadership series, and the uh, Tamiya International Leadership Series. Um, knowledge is power, right? And understanding the different, um, the different issues that our community worldwide are facing is important for us to uh, continue to seek, seek peace and achieve peace around the world. Currently, we have uh, a conflict going on, right? Uh, that has actually been going on for a long time, right? Um, it is important to really understand what is happening. And so again, it is important for you to gather knowledge and understand thoroughly what is happening um, for us to demand justice and for us to um, ask our governments to use resources, et cetera, we need to be informed of everything that is happening, right? And so um, doing research on your own is vital to this, is already supporting this SDG and um, informing yourselves through talks such as this one. Last but not least, um, SDG number 17, which talks about partnerships for the both. So uh, SDG 17 aims to strengthen the needs of implementation and revitalize the global partnership for sustainable development. Um, target 17.1, uh, strengthen domestic resource mobilization, including thorough international, including thorough international support to developing countries to promote to improve domestic capacity for tax and other revenue collection. So going back to what I mentioned in the beginning, um, we can achieve more together, right? So this is what this SDG is talking about, partnerships. This is how we are able to better um, achieve these goals. Um, some of the local organizations that we have here, United Way of Laredo and the Area Community Foundation. Both of these organizations actually gather funds to help other uh, nonprofit organizations, charities uh, that are working towards this. So again, building those partnerships and supporting each other's team. Something that I really wanted to point out, this is not local, but this is uh, talks about going back to the responsibility that not only nonprofits, uh, individuals, governments, uh, but also businesses or the private sector have it in these um, in these goals. It's a partnership between New Story Charity and Icon Building, right? So um, some time ago, I uh, was able to see a story where um, New Story Charity, actually let's start by kind of uh, explaining what each one of these does. New Story <laughs> Charity, their goal is to end homelessness, homelessness, right? That's their goal. And so they're not going to stop what they're doing until they end homelessness around the world. Um, Icon is actually a Texas-based um, business, right? Um, and what distinguishes them is that they're very innovative, right? And so they do um, 3D building um, of homes, right? They, they have a 3D printer that prints out homes. So what they did is that they saw what New Story was doing. And they said, hey, I have a better way for you to achieve what you're trying to achieve, right? Building homes. It is more affordable. It is faster. And um, it is less resources that are used, right? And so what did they say? Let's partner up. Let's do this in Mexico. So they created a partnership in Mexico. Uh, where they developed a whole community of 3D printed homes. So yeah, you all can look at this. It's pretty nice uh, looking at the 3D printer going over and over building the homes. And so it's incredible what partnerships can achieve. Again, we're completely different sectors in a way, right? Like we, we have different aims, but at the end of the day, we can help each other and we can continue to uh, achieve what we're both looking, what we're, what we're both working towards. So how is it that we are able to act locally, right? So we can set priorities, national and local. So we go back to the beginning of the presentation talking about 
how the United Nations are not interfering with how countries are um, putting into practice these goals. They adopted the sustainable development goals, but they're not telling um, countries how to do it, right? And so our responsibility as citizens of these country is to ask our countries, you know what, we can do more. We can uh, continue to develop, we can continue to create programs, et cetera. So setting priorities um, at a national and local level are gonna be key for all of us to move forward together. Um, we need to mobilize awareness, right? Um, so what we're doing now right here, teaching you all, having you all understand what these goals are and how you can play a part of it is key. Um, what I think we could do is include any effort that you do, let's say um, any of our sororities here on campus, you're working towards, um, let's say for example, GAMMA's breast cancer awareness. Uh, and part of your flyers putting SDG uh, number five, I believe, gender equality. Um, and people are gonna see that, right? They see the icons as part of, what is that? I've seen it, I've seen those things everywhere, right? Raising awareness and like having people question, what are these like, I see different organizations, they all have this little square, what is that, right? So something as simple as that um, can make people curious and then they go and look for it and then it speaks to them, right? Uh, the way I was um, became interested in the SDGs was exactly like that. What, what's going on? What are these squares, right? Um, build on positive interconnections. So again, uh, partnerships are key and connectedness are key uh, to making this, um, a possibility. So it's a, a shared responsibility and we really can um, create a change together. Um, additionally, we need to decentralize responsibilities. So if you look at some of these goals, that doesn't apply to me. Like we, we don't need to work on that. We're good, right? That is the responsibility of that country. That is the responsibility of that city, right? It's not, it's a, a shared responsibility, right? And so um, even something as simple as, this is what we do, this is how you can do it, can help, right? Um, we need to build coalitions for participation. So again, um, all of these organizations that are working together towards a common purpose, we need to continue building those, continue gathering people. Uh, additionally, we need to monitor and regularly report progress. So again, every country uh, decides how they, how they implement this, but um, they do submit a report to the United Nations at the end of every year um, with how they progressed here. So continuing to do that, continuing for your organizations to see what you all have done will help you understand how far you have come and what else needs to be done, right? Um, and then super important, publicize successes. So um, this QR code actually leads you directly to the United Nations website. Again, um, there is a lot of projects that people are doing around the world. They also create um, summits, they create awards, for projects. And so definitely look at that. All these resources are available for everyone. This is a shared goal that we all have. And so you have the ability to implement these in your projects and your activities and any efforts that your organizations or you as individuals are doing. Um, so take advantage of it. Um, yes, and have that beautiful. So anyways, uh, appreciate you all so much for this. And I, open to any questions that you all have, any discussions that you all want to have regarding the SDGs. Questions? Any questions? So I guess I'm going to open it up to not just here, but what, what is sustainable development, right? So when you think about sustainable development, I think these are great goals. They're like, oh my gosh, so much information. It is. Right? Sorry about that. Well, what is sustainable <laughs> development? 
Do we even know what sustainable development is? Why does sustainable development or why is development important? What is why is sustainable development even a thing? How many people are in the world right now? Oh man, folks, what? Take a number, take a guess. Huh? It's about 8 billion people, but we've grown a billion people in the last, I think it's 15 years, 10, 15 years. We are growing at an unsustainable rate. So when we talk about development, we're talking about where do people eat? What do they drink? How can we support humanity, right? We are a global institution, an international institution. So when we talk about these, kind of esoteric or like in the cloud goals or like, what can we do? What does it matter here? I don't know about you, but Laredo has some not so good drinking water, right? For example, we've had too many boil water notices, right? But we also have one water source and it is only the Rio Grande, right? So if we're not practicing some of these, we ourselves are gonna be impacted. I was at a, speech yesterday, Connie, uh, with uh, a state senator, uh, Roland Gutierrez from San Antonio. So Senator Roland Gutierrez was talking about, and specifically was asked questions about the Rio Grande, because this is a very big thing, friends. We have one water source. When that's gone, we got nothing else to drink. This was the, probably the coolest summer that we will have and we've actually had uh, since uh, for about five, 10 years. But it will be the last coolest summer that uh, a lot of scientists have just come out, the last coolest summer that South Texas will have in a very long time, possibly forever. It's gonna get hotter and hotter and hotter. How many of you knew that we're at a drought level two right now? What does that mean? You know what a drought level two is in Laredo? What? Well, obviously it's water, okay, but what does that mean, drought level two? It means that you can't technically, the city can start implementing water restrictions. Did you know that? They did actually, right? They did. So technically, your families can get fined if they're not following these water restrictions, right? You can only water your lawn every other day. And it's left side, right side of watering lawns. And soon they're going to move us to level three, which will be even further water cuts. But we're at the far tail end of the Rio Grande, right? What's happening right now in Colorado, Arizona, California, that's all part of the Colorado River, they have water restrictions continuously. Corpus has water restrictions as well. If you don't think that these sustainable development goals are important for you all, that's why we're glad that we're having this conversation because Laredo is going to continue to grow. We're going to not have enough jobs or educational systems. I mean, this is the first year ever in Laredo that they've ever had full day pre-K. And still not all the schools. San Antonio has it. So when we talk about global development, I think it's three, education, right? Four, yeah. Four is education. How do you educate a populace when you don't even teach them to read and write until they get into kindergarten? Right? Like you're setting yourselves up. So that, you see how this all plays together? And as an international institution, we're hopeful that you see kind of what this all is. All right. Maybe now we kind of get a bigger picture of like, hey, now we know why this is important. Because uh, I think going through the goals is actually very important. We've been working with Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs, in the Seoul office and here at the university since, I believe, 2018, in 2017, 2018. Um, one of our Seoul summits was specifically on the SDGs uh, for everybody. Uh, so um, what other questions or things we have here? Yes. Um, in front of how the river is drying up, right? Yeah. And a lot of us were aware, or I can say for myself, I was not aware that we were in a level two drought. Yeah. And I was, uh, I heard that there was restriction on water, but I didn't know as to like why. And you could assume it's a drought, but you don't think like in a couple of months I can reach a drought level three. So to the people who do know that there is droughts uh, or water restrictions, and they know there's cleaner and more liable um, 
systems of using water, but yet we don't advocate and we don't change. And we just continue using like these companies that um, provide contaminated water. How can I, as like a student here in Tamu, help to like change or impact these kinds of companies or like a right there, risk. Risk in and of itself, and I'm not a I'm a very I'm not a promoter of them, but I will shamelessly <laughs> promote them to the day I die. They're fantastic. Trisha Cortez, who's the executive director of uh, Risk, is is great. They're going to be presenting for November's Social Change Leadership Series on water and water issues. So we're very excited to have them come in to talk about water, but follow risk. You follow them on, uh, I think they have a TikTok account and, and, Instagram, accounts, yeah. huh? and an Instagram, but they also have, which is the, the most phenomenal thing. You could become a fellow and get paid to be a fellow to learn about environmental and water issues. So you can get a job. It's a scholarship, a fellowship, I think. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah. The stipend from Master's Stadium is about a thousand. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You're part of the cohort this year? Yeah. Because mm -hmm. last year was more. Mm -hmm. Wait, what was this? Yeah, it was, it was less. less. It was less. Oh, never mind. So it's gone up. Yay. This is perfect, right? By, uh, so, so trust me, there are tons of opportunities for folks to get involved, but it's on you all to do it. Does that answer your question? Yes. Fantastic. But follow Rips. Social media is your greatest friend. Follow the city of Wa uh, Laredo Water Utility. Utilities Department as well. They're actually the ones that tell us what level drought we're on. All right, friends, we are at our time. Um, so let's give Connie a... Uh, So, we have a special treat uh, for you all today, uh, not today, but in the month of October, we're going to have a third social change leadership series on 1030, but this one is going to be called Dangerous Drinking, uh, Halloween and Alcohol, and it's going to be with SCAN, sponsored by Greek uh, Council. So, we'll have food, money, prizes for that one. We're actually giving out prizes. Thank you all very much. Make sure you sign in.